Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Hebrews chapter 11. We're talk, today we're talking about this. The faith that pleases God. All right? The faith that pleases God. Uh, let's just start Hebrews 11. One will be down through verse 6. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, that is by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. In other words, something spiritual created natural matter. Okay? A spiritual force created natural matter. God said, you know, God spoke and things came into existence. A spiritual force created natural things. And that, you know, that's, you know, so you understand, even natural things are a derivative of spiritual. That means, oh man, I'm just getting, I'm getting something hot off the presses. That's real good. That means that the natural is a derivative of the spiritual. Therefore, spiritual things govern the natural things. That's, that's, that was just right off the hot. I never, ever in my life thought of it that way. So I just got off the presses. Hallelujah. I mean, heaven just went, skunking, sent it down. Hallelujah. Spiritual things are derivative. I mean, natural things are derivative of spiritual things. Therefore, spiritual things govern natural things and not vice versa. Amen. Amen. What does that mean? That means if there's bad stuff happening in the natural, there's bad spiritual things governing it, and you can you got to do it. You can't deal with it natural. You got to deal with it in the spiritual. Amen. All right. Did y'all? We could stay there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Let's just skip my notes for a minute. T Duh. Like we've never done that before. And run back over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 real quick. And we'll start, we'll start right down here um, in verse... Oh, we'll just start in verse 15. It says, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the, through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. But though our in, outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Now, what does what is 2, I mean, 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 say? I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Paul, in referring to himself, says, I keep my body under. Who's the I? He's the spirit man. Man is a spirit. So spiritual things govern even natural things in the body. Your spirit man governs your body. Okay? And though the, the inward man, the outward man perishes, that's natural. The inward man, spiritual, is renewed day by day. <coughs> for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. While we look not, at the things which are seen. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen. What, what's that, natural? Talking about natural? Hello? But at the things which are not seen. What are we talking about? Spiritual. For the things which are seen are what? Temporal. Amen. Now that word in the Greek, you go study that, it, has, it kind of carries this, conveys this thought, subject to change. The things of the natural are subject to change. But the things which are not seen, what's that, spiritual, are eternal. Well, what do we know from the word of God that is spiritual? Now, Jesus said this in one place. He said, um, uh, my words, they are spirit and they are life. So the word of God is spiritual. And he said this, forever, O Lord, the word of God says this, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So what do we know that is spiritual that never changes? The word. The Word of God never changes. Yet it tells us that the natural things are subject to change. Doesn't mean they change, means they're subject to it. So, now we just said this, that hot off the press, this revelation we just got. That the natural, 
is birthed from the spiritual in the first place because God spoke it out of his word of spirit. It created natural things. Therefore, the natural is governed by the spiritual. And if the natural is subject to change and the word never changes, guess how we change the natural? By the word, by the word of God. Amen. By the word of God. We take God's word and we change circumstances and situations because the spiritual governs natural. Amen. Not the other way around. Spiritual governs natural and natural is subject to change. Amen. It means it's changeable. When you got that bill, it wasn't in heaven forever settled. Amen. When you got a doctor's report, it was not in heaven forever settled. Right. When you got, you know, you're, you got fired, that's not forever in heaven settled. Right. Right. All those circumstances are what? Subject to change. Meaning that they are changeable. Right. And then we got, we've got to go to the, the thing that it makes it change. If we don't take what makes it change and apply it and make it work, it won't change. It'll stay there. But it doesn't mean it has to. So, so when we look at this, when he says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, that the things which are seen are temporal are subject to change, that means no matter what the circumstance going on around you is, it, is, it, has, a, it has, has a susceptibility or an uh, ability to be changed by that which created the natural, in the first place, spiritual. That's why we spend years, decades, weeks, months writing books, teaching series, teaching on have, you know, your, your confession and speaking. Now, <clears throat> we missed it many times simply because we thought if we just said it and didn't believe it, it would work. But remember that the spirit of faith is this. Um, Bill, help me with the scripture. I just went totally blank where it was. We, Verse 12. 13. 13, okay. Same chapter. Didn't you have to leave the chapter? Okay. Verse 13. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written. So here's the spirit of faith. I believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Faith is not confessing. As a matter of fact, if you're not in faith, it's not a confession. Well, I, I read my daily confessions every day. If you're not in faith, it's not a confession. Well, what is it if it's not confession and I'm not, and, and, and if I'm not in faith and, I could, and I'm saying it? It's meditation. Right. See, to speak something over and over, to mutter something over and over again and not believe it is to meditate on it. You're thinking about it. To produce belief. To produce faith. But when you believe it and you say it, it is confession. Okay? So you take the words that are spiritual and decree them against the natural, which ha is subject to change, and start making faith declarations or confessions. It, it is a Greek word to confess, to, to profess or to confess. But we understand Bible faith, you believe it. You believe it. If you don't believe, see, what did it say about getting saved? If you'll believe in your heart that Jesus is, has been raised from the dead and confess with your mouth that he's Lord, you'll be saved. They go hand in hand. you got to believe. You know, what does Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24 say? Verily I say unto you, or, or have the faith of God, you know, have the faith of God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever, Nathan, whosoever, that whosoever, all right, just in case you're wondering, if you're a whosoever, raise your hands. When we say whosoever, you raise your hand. If you don't know that you're a whosoever, we can help you. You're a whosoever. Okay? <clears throat> that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. See, that the word believe is, is the same root word in the Greek as faith. They come from the same word. Pistis. P-I-S-T-I-S. Okay, you got different forms, Pisteo and all kinds of stuff. But the root is, is, is to believe or to trust or to or have faith. Okay, so it's a, shall believe in his heart. What? That the things he says. So here it is. The Mark eleven twenty three makes it clear that you got to believe what you say to get it. 
For whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. So the whosoever gets whatsoever if they believe what they say. That's Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Okay? So what does that mean? The confession of faith is exactly that. It is a declaration of what you believe. Now, if you're going around and got your little book called, you know, so, uh, Jermaine Copeland's uh, Confessions or whatever, or Charles Capps' Confessions, great stuff. Not mocking it. I think it's good to have because it helps you build a, a you know, it helps you build the foundation for confession. They're good things to say. But if you don't believe it when you say it, it's not, it's not a confession. You're meditating. But when, you be, when it comes to a place you believe it and say it, now it's become your confession. Of what? Of faith. Okay? So now you have natural things that are birthed of spiritual things. So the whole world was birthed out of spiritual things, which means spiritual forces reign over the natural. Did you notice he didn't say that the, 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 um, the, the, uh, the eternal things are subject to change? No, he says they're eternal. Things which are not seen are eternal. They're, not, they're going to stay the same forever. So the word of God's going to stay the same. Now, I know we live in the change everything society, of, of, and that's all of the devil. Everything that Satan is doing in this realm right now is to water down the authority of the word of God. Well, we got the feminist Bible. God is a she. I think God knows what he is. He don't have any qualms about it. He is not a transgender God. Amen. Okay? He don't need any help figuring out what he is. Or gender fluid. That's right. Gender fluid, the new term. It means you just don't know. You're flowing back and forth between the... Just anything. Yeah, whatever you, whatever you decide to be. They got some woman now who says she, she identifies as being a cat. You know, <laughs> what'd you say? Who are you to say she's wrong? There's a woodshed out back. <laughs> Didn't know you were coming to the comedy club today, did you, Tim? <laughs> so here we have it. I'm, I'm way off my notes, okay? I will get back. I will get back to it. It might be, huh? because I don't have a transgender bathroom here. <laughs> Tell you what, run down the hallway and just put a sign over the, on the doors. We don't want Tim offended now. <laughs> well, we can use Colin's trailer. How about that? <laughs> All right, now. So we're understanding now that the things which are not seen were made by those things which the things are seen are not were made by those things which are not seen, and the things which are seen are subject to change, and the things which are not seen are eternal. And we know that the word of God's forever settled in heaven. Then where do we spend our time meditating and, and focusing and 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 looking into to determine how things are supposed to be? You can't look at your job situation. You can't look at your income situation. You can't look at your body. You got to get into the word. And you have to stay into the word. Now let's run let's run over here real quick to Romans 10:17. We're going to make it back to Hebrews uh, uh 11, I promise you. Maybe next week but we're going to make it back there. Now Romans chapter 10 says this. It says, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, we talked about this on, Thursday, on Wednesday night, and uh, faith comes, or faith accompanies, or faith the, comes by what? The message heard. And what is the message? Now, in, in the Greek, in the, what we call the majority text, now, like I said on Wednesday, there are two main texts that people use for translating the Bible. The majority of the text was accepted as the primary text until the late 1800s when the Revised Standard Version came out. And they began to use the minority text, which are the ones that had less agreement with the older transcripts. 
Okay? And so there's a lot of things that got changed and stuff. And so uh, when, in the minority text, it came out and began to say things like the message of Christ or the, you know, what Jesus spoke. But in the, in the majority text, it, it says here, by, um, by the Ramatos of Theo. By the Ramatos of Theo. And, and, and that is the Rama of God. The thing God spoke. The spoken word. Faith comes. So what happens? Well, how do we get the word spoken to us or revealed to us? Remember, Jesus said that the Holy Ghost will come to, unto you and he'll will bring to you remembrance all things whatever I've said unto you. Remember, one of the, one of the, one of the meanings of the word parakletos, now remember, now if you read King James Bible, or probably most translations, when it says, Jesus said, I'll send another comforter. In the Greek, there, that is parakletos. And that's the transliteration of the letters, parakletos. And that word doesn't just mean he comforts. Uh, <laughs> and Pastor Ed was long in preaching and knocked Nick's guitar over and went and raised him up. I, I, I think... I, I <laughs> The Faith and Victory Comedy Club. Hallelujah. All right. I, I got a feeling that guitar costs more than that tabletop. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here we have it. Faith, faith comes from the message, but the message comes from the Ramatos, the revealed word of God. So we begin to see. You, you can get, wake up tomorrow morning. There's a bill there. You can't pay. Well, as long as you talk about that bill and look at that bill and fuss about that bill and whine about that bill and complain about that bill and, and, and I mean, and just fall apart and, and, and like Dick was having a second go of palpitations about that bill, <laughs> nothing's going to happen to that bill. That bill's subject to change. But it ain't going to change until you use the force that can make it change. What? While we look not at the things which are seen, back over 2 Corinthians again, 4, but at the things which are not seen. Because the things, the bill, is subject to change or temporal. But the thing that you change it with, I'm, I'm paraphrasing now, I'm getting this, is eternal. So now what do we do? Well, first Joshua 1 8. I am not on my notes. Here, see? <laughs> <laughs> Don't break, Cap. <laughs> Joshua 1 8 says what? This book of the law. Now understand at the time that Joshua got that word from God. Remember, God spoke to Joshua. Remember, Moses, my servant, is dead. Da -da 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 -da. And this is the first chapter right after Moses is, is gone. And, you know, Joshua's taken over. I mean, he's becoming the big dog of the, of, the, of the guys and everything. And God comes down there and says, you know, telling him to be strong and courageous and so forth. And then he goes down in verse 8 and says this. In the first chapter of Joshua, God speaks to him and says, this book of the law. Now, understand, at the time that Joshua got that from God, there were five books plus Job. Job is the oldest book chronologically in the Bible. Okay? So we had Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's, and it's all called, referred to throughout Jewish history, even in New Testament theology. That's called the law. Now, when, you know, the law is only a part of it, but it's called, they, they refer to it as the law. Okay? So God speaks to Joshua and says, this book of the law. Now, so what would that be? If it's all that God had given them, it's what? It's God's word. They would be synonymous terms. In New Testament speak, what God would have said is the word of God. At that time, he had the, he had the law, so he says this book of the law. So if the New Testament as, that's a new word, Joshua 1.8, we would say the word of God shall not depart out of your mouth. But you'll meditate. Now the word meditate in Hebrew literally means, it's an Eastern term, and it means to mutter. We've all muttered before. At least most of you. I'm sure if you've ever worked, men, if you've ever worked on anything, you've muttered. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> Actress heart calm down. All right. We've all, men, you got to work on something, and it, you know, you're, you, know you're, you hit the wrong nail or whatever. Or, or you, you, your, your finger slips as you're trying to do something, and it just runs right across that wood and just digs a hole out. That, that's pallet wood scar right there. Um, and, you're, and, you're and you start talking to stuff. 
I'm telling you one thing this time you're going you know you're that's muttering you're talking to yourself hello and to mutter so the book of the law should not depart out of your mouth that you'll mutter it day and night what is muttering you're meditating you're feeding on it what that you may observe what happens after muttering or meditating on something long enough you, you come to believe it now I went to high school with a guy and that guy told some of the biggest whoppers on the planet about what he did to me and Ned Kraft and other people beat us up and put us in the weight room over the weekend at school and all this kind of stuff. Now, Wade was living in an illusion. Because, see, he was two grades ahead of us. And when he was in the sixth grade, he was supposed to be in the eighth. And he used to be able to bully us around. Except one thing happened. We got bigger. He didn't grow. <laughs> One day he woke up, and we were football players who just, you know, ran. I, be, I used to beat lockers in with my head before the games without my helmet on. That was how I sight. I do, boom, 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 Arr! I even did it to center block walls a few times to intimidate people. Just, just walk up to the wall and go, bam! It's crazy. Yeah, it was. It was stupid. It hurt. But I didn't let them know it hurt. I was intimidating him. If he's crazy enough to hit a cinder block wall with his head, we're not going to mess with him. Because he's just crazy. Anyway, he would tell us things like, you know, he beat me up and locked me in the, lock, the, the weight room at the school over the weekend. They couldn't find me in this. He would tell these things. This, you, know, you know, you get to be, you, you, and, and my brother, I see, you, you're a liar. If you, you, you lie, my brother could lie. I mean, and here's how he always did my mom and dad. they say, where have you been? He'd say, huh? And while they asked him the question again, he was making up the lie. And it was good. I mean, I sat there in amazement. As a younger brother, I'm like, man, that was good. Me, they'd ask me a question, and the word liar would come on my forehead. Uh, liar, liar. Where you been? I wasn't just. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you'll meditate, you'll you'll tell something. Like, I've known people who've told lies so long they actually believe they were true. Well, see, let's do this on the right side. Let's get a hold of the Word of God and mutter it and mutter it and mutter it until we just believe it's absolutely true. And then what does Joshua say? This book of the law should not depart out of your mouth, but you'll meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then. You will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Amen. Now, the Hebrew actually says, you'll deal wisely in the affairs of life. What happens when we meditate, mutter the word to the point that we believe it, and now we're making confessions of faith with that which is eternal, then that which is eternal comes into contact with that which is subject to change and changes it. The key is is that we have to get to the point that we believe what we're saying. And you have to meditate on that to get it. There's no, there, there's no shortcut. I can't lay hands on you and give you that. Now God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. But go through the, go through the, the epistles in the book and Paul's writings and so forth, and you'll find out your faith groweth exceedingly. Okay? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. God's, what does it mean? God, faith, more faith or increasing faith comes. Amen? Uh, your faith can be weak. Your faith can grow. All right? And you have to be fully persuaded. Like Abraham, being fully persuaded that that which he has promised, he was also able to perform. Remember King Agrippa? Paul preached to him, he said this, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Now, I hate to say it, he ended up in hell going almost wasn't good enough, was it? Hello? Almost wasn't good enough. There's an old country song back in the 60s called Almost Persuaded to let strange lips lead me home. I was almost persuaded. <laughs> now, it's a good thing you didn't, if you were married to my wife, it's a good thing you didn't get, you didn't get fully persuaded. 
Because death standeth at the door. <laughs> she told me when we got married, she said, let me tell you something. We will never get a divorce. She said, our church doesn't forgive divorce, but it'll forgive murder. I will kill you. <laughs> Now, if I, I kind of, you kind of think, well, maybe she was kidding. If it hadn't been for the war paint and the tomahawk in her hand, I probably would have. <laughs> I'm just teasing now. So, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the rhema of God. As we meditate on the word, the parakletos. Remember, we, we did, I didn't forget that. I didn't leave that. I'm going to come back to it. Remember, the name for the Holy Ghost in the Greek is parakletos. We translate it comforter. But it means comforter, advocate, helper, strengthener, standby, intercessor, and teacher. Seven meanings to that word in the Greek. So as you mutter the word, the teacher begins to act on that word to reveal that word. So that you can now speak it in faith. Amen. God wants us to live that life of faith and have power. Now look, let's go back over. I told you I'm not going to forget uh, Hebrews 11. Did y'all enjoy that side journey? Two of you? So back to verse 3 where we got off on all this. Through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were uh, not made of things which do appear. In other words, they were made of things something that doesn't appear. Again, the DNA of the natural is spiritual. It's creative force behind it's spiritual. It means that spiritual can govern it, change it. Okay. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God translated him. For he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible. Everybody say impossible. impossible. To please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now we, we're not going to read the rest of this chapter. Let's stop right here. The word please. Um comes, it's a derivative. Now the word, it's, it's Strong's definition like 2100 or 3100, something like that. Um, 3101 is where it came from. And it is a derivative of, of another he, Greek word. And it does mean to please, but the, the, the derivative it comes from, no, the root that it came out of means to be in agreement with. Or agreeable. So then faith, so without faith it's impossible to Please, or is it possible to come into agreement with God? God can't agree with fear. God can't agree with doubt. God can't agree with unbelief. Amen? So, um, you become agreeable with God, or come into harmony with God. Um, the word agreement, Webster defines agreement as being of one mind. Okay? But see, we're spiritual, so we're to be of one spirit. Remember that? We're, we're, we, we commune with the Father of spirits. Okay, and we shall live. We, you know. So Jesus said, I and my Father are one. He said his word is spiritual. So we're, we, become, we become one spirit. We come into agreement with God. How? Through faith. God doesn't change. I am God, the Lord, and I change not. Now, you can go up to God and tell him you don't like the fact that he made you a woman. And he's not going to change you into a man. Now, some demon-possessed nutbag doctor might, but you're still going to be a woman. And I don't care how many hormones they pump into your body, you're still a woman. Or a man, whichever one you started out as. That's what you is. I don't care. That's what you is. That's what you, you would die. Now, I remember a number of years ago, some, some, Sandy probably remembers these. Back in the 60s, they used to have these little kits you put on Volkswagen bug chassis. You'd take, you'd take the Volkswagen bug thing off, and you'd put a um, Duesenberg or whatever fiberglass body on it. It was still a Volkswagen bug. It still went... It was still a rear engine, air-cooled, one point of horsepower <laughs> people's car. I don't care what, body, what, 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 what cover you put on it, the heart and soul of that vehicle is a Volkswagen bug. But it was so awesome. 
Bill had a blue one? Well, uh, Chevrolet competition blue. Bug? Bug. That's so awesome. I got that thing up to 80 some miles an hour. <laughs> 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 No, see, what it was you didn't see is they kicked the floorboard out and they were doing the Flintstone thing on the bottom. <laughs> My best friend in high school had a Volkswagen Bug, blue, that blue. And then we bought a Volkswagen station wagon. Yeah. Same car. Just had the little station wagon thing on it. You know, rear, rear engine, air cooled. I mean, they, they sound like a lawnmower engine trying to get started. And they would burn up in a heartbeat if they got, they got whatever. Now, you put that body on that Volkswagen bug, you could not say you had a Duesenberg. I don't care what you said. It may look like one. It may was decorated. It had a Rolls Royce. They had, they had like numerous body kits you could put on these things. And, um, but when you, as soon as you cranked it up and started changing gears, and everybody knew because the front end would go up. You know, <laughs> how many remember that? Yeah, the, the, it would kind of like the back, the front end would go up when you change gears. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Bill, <laughs> terror on the highway. <laughs> but simply covering it didn't change it. <coughs> simply covering it or changing that outside body didn't change its internal. So to change the, the natural, you've got to change the internal through something that is different. That's good. Amen. Isn't that right? You start taking the word of God. You renew your mind to the word. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you can prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Amen. Receive with meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to save, sozo, restore, make sound your suke, your soul. Now, the, uh, we like to say it this way, you have to change how you think. So that when natural things show up, back, there, back into the Corinthian church, we'll go. I believe Second Corinthians chapter. Chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Well, Paul wrote some good stuff to the church of Corinth. Why? Because they were carnal as all get out. We need, and, and a lot of stuff that they, they went through, we go through, and it helps us all out. Look here. 2 Corinthians chapter four, uh, 10, verse 1. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who am, who am presence and base among you, but being absent and bold towards you. In other words, my natural presence isn't anything big, but I am a spiritual giant. For I, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think as a, of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, if I say this, I walk in the flesh. How do you know you walk in the flesh? You wouldn't be here if you didn't. You got to have your earth suit to hang around. Your body lets you function in this realm. Paul wrote and said to be absent from the body is to be present for the believer. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You gotta have the body to function here. Though we walk in the flesh, what? We do not war in or after the flesh. Your battle's not done in the flesh. I.e., you cannot change the natural things that are subject to change through natural means. Because the thing that changes them is their spiritual DNA that created them. Spiritual things change them. It takes a spiritual force to change natural circumstances. Okay? For the weapon, listen, he says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that means natural, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought. Thoughts come out of spiritual realms. That's why you put on the helmet of salvation because Satan is throwing fiery darts at your mind to get you to lay hold of them to begin to meditate on them. Why? Because if you meditate on the wrong thing, you'll establish a natural thing and keep it there and won't change it. 
Hey, although it's subject to change, you're not doing anything to change it. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. There we go. We'll stop right there. That's all we need. Casting down imagination is every high thought. Now, how are we going to cast it down? Now, one thing is, how, do you, how are you going to know that it's exalting itself against the knowledge of Christ unless you know what the knowledge of Christ is? You've got to know what the Word says. <laughs> and you better know what the guitar is. I know what the table ain't. Anyway. So here we are. Uh, and this is a whole different way of doing this sermon because I wasn't going to do this. Anyway. To come into agreement with God is we've got to come into agreement with what God says. Now, let's think about that in the, um, in the realm of finances. God says, bring the tithe and the offering into the storehouse and prove me. Now, a number of years ago, Joe Morris was with us, and he said he had just done a study on that word prove in, in Malachi chapter 3, and it means like a scientific experiment. Now, we all went that, we, at some point in time, we were in school, and somebody bought the volcano with bacon, soda, and vinegar. Remember that? They had the little bacon, they had the, 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 the volcano they made, and down there was some bacon, soda, they put vinegar in there, and it would come over. And then they got really cute, they started putting red dye in it. So you got lava coming out, you know. <clears throat> and um, th scientifically, we prove that baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, and vinegar have a chemical reaction. Okay? And at the right mixture, it just foams up and runs over. Okay? All right? That's not, we've proven that. The Bible says, bring the tithe and the offering of the storehouse and prove me now here with. In other words, just like you mix baking soda and vinegar together to get that reaction, bring your tithe and get the reaction of what God says he'll do. Bring your offering and get, and what? See if I won't open unto you the windows of heaven and pour, now King James says this, pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. Now my margin says, the Hebrew says, empty out. Now, I like empty out better. Are you here? Why? Because empty out means nothing's held back. And God said, if you'll bring the tithe and offer, see, what, see, when we meditate on this, we begin to think differently. Oh, my God, I can't afford to give that money. I'm going to go under. And God says, prove me. Watch what I do. Amen. You bring it and watch what I do. Just prove it. Prove it out. That's what he says. So prove it. You in, and I'll just empty out on you. You're going to bring you 10%. And God's going to dump Hello? It's like going and getting a shovel full and throwing a, a, a load of, into a back of a truck, and when you get to where you're going, you open it up, and it's full. Dump truck full. God says, bring the tithe, bring the offering, and prove me. And then I'm going to open up my windows, and I'm going to empty out on you blessings you don't have room enough to receive. Now let me say this. If you've constantly been thinking about lack and not having enough, you've got to change how you think. And the only way to change how you think is begin to meditate. Go get the scriptures on prosperity and start meditating on them. I'm using prosperity right now. This works in, in other areas. This works in healing. It works in soundness of mind. It works in peace. It works all kinds of all kinds of things the Word of God promises us or has for us. It works there. I'm just using this one right now. This is kind of a, a, a strongly natural example. Let me say this. Prosperity and poverty are natural events in the natural I'm going to get six jobs. You could never get enough work to change it. Now, you, know, you need to work because the hand of the diligent prospers. But you can't kill yourself working. You can only work so many hours a week. Amen. Physically. Your body can't, you know, it's just not, it's not you've got to have rest. You know, that's just, there's natural principles in the Word of God. that tells you, you know, that, you know you, God gives us sleep. We get rest. We're to, you know, to rest from our labors. All kinds of things. So going out and having eight jobs and working, you know, and getting two hours of sleep a day is not going to fix it. If you're in a financial hole and you can't get out, it's because you've got to go back and start addressing that, that financial hole from the thing that will change it. Amen. Along with cutting up your credit cards. Anyway. Honey, I went, to the, went on the sale today and saved, you know, $300. How much did you spend saving $300? 4000 
I had one guy in our church one time who told his wife she, was so, she came home and she was so happy. She had told him how much money she had saved. He said, we can go broke saving money. Because she was just, you know, she was, if it was on sale, she'd buy it. It didn't matter. It was on sale. So that, that percentage of, it's like going to pennies and buying the jewelry. 80% off. Yeah, but they marked it up 300%. Just so you can give, and they actually got in trouble. They had to change their policy because they were in trouble for the way they were marking it up and then putting it on sale. Because it was, it, was, it was really switch and bait. They were marking it up way high and then coming back down, they were still getting full price for it. But you thought, 80% off. <laughs> Woo! Jean-Claude. Yeah, Jean-Claude Panet. Hey, hey. The French, the French, uh, Julia. Ha. And the mall. Jean-Claude, that's J.C. Penney's folks. Anyway, anybody got anything out of this? Yep. You understand? We're going to change it by saying what the Word says, meditating on the Word, agree, coming into agreement with God. You cannot please or agree with God without faith. God won't change. God's not going to wake up tomorrow and say, well, Jeff, just stay in unbelief. I'm going to bless you anyhow. That's, that's the way grace people are preaching. It doesn't matter what, now I'm, I'm not saying every grace, I'm saying the extreme crazy nuts are preaching. It doesn't matter what you do, God's still going to do it. And that's not what God says. You got to come in faith. You got to come into agreement with Him. You cannot be living in rebellion to His Word and expect His Word to work for you. It doesn't work that way. Now, what do you mean? Well, some things are sin. Some things are just unbelief. Well, unbelief is sin, but in, in the in the sense of <clears throat> you're out, you know, smoking up, shooting up, and all that kind of stuff, and then you would come in there and talk to you know, Lord, I believe for a million dollars. What for? So you can spend it on some more, some more dope? He's not going to bless you. And it don't work that way. All right? Anybody get blessed? We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752. Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.